Let's do a little GPU buying guide for the month of March just to talk about some popular GPUs and if they're still worth it buying today. So let's get into it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. If you like my content, subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. All right guys, so let's do a little quick GPU buying guide for the month of March and see what's worth buying today. And maybe if you should wait on certain GPUs depending on what you already have. Let's remember that AMD's so-called Big Navi and Nvidia's 3000 series are gonna be coming sometime this year. With AMD, I believe it's probably gonna be more towards the end of the year likely with nvidia as well there may be some announcements coming soon all amd has really said is that they're definitely working on some higher end gpus so i think we would likely see these towards the end of the year i would say after august september you know for it to come in during that fourth quarter so let's focus on the gpus at hand that we have today and in march of 2020 should you buy these gpus and if so which one well first let's get the elephant out of the room and talk about the amd GPUs. Now, I have been a fan of AMD's cards like the 5700 XT, but there has been a big issue lately with the drivers. The drivers have been driving many people nuts, no pun intended. People even got rid of their AMD cards and went back to Nvidia, which is just a lot more stable. Now, I do have a 5700 XT and I didn't have many issues myself, but I did read about a lot of people having issues and AMD recently acknowledged these issues in a very large fix, which apparently they fixed multiple, multiple issues. So that driver fix is still pretty new and according to some preliminary reports, a lot of these issues have been fixed. So these AMD cards could come back and be a better deal now, but I would still be a little bit wary if you don't want to deal with any issues. I would first do a lot of research on these AMD drivers just to make sure whatever game you're playing really isn't affected and the driver issues have fixed. If not, for the most part, I may steer a little bit more towards Nvidia just because recently they've had a better, more reliable track record and it doesn't matter what price you can get a graphics card at if it's not performing at all and giving you glitches and black screens it's obviously not going to be very effective so just remember and this is going to be for the 5700 5700 xt as well as the 55 and the 5600 series they all you know they're all kind of embedded in this issue so i would definitely research these specific driver issues especially pertaining to any games that you play so if you're buying these amd cards while i do think in a lot of cases they're great cards and they go up right against nvidia in terms of price to performance we really have to make sure that these driver issues are fully fleshed out and fixed before we can make a hundred percent recommendation across the board and i figure probably by the next month if we do a gpu buying guide in april by then a lot of these issues should be ironed out a lot better so by then we'll definitely have a better idea but for now i would just advise some caution do a little research before you jump into the amd card but know that they are great gpus i love the 5700 xt i think for the price it provides really really good performance so if you want to risk it a little bit just make sure to do your research on that now in terms of other gpus what looks good going into march now now i still think that the nvidia evga the 2060 ko released in response to amd's 5600 xt graphics card is really a great great value i mean if you can find it for 299 it's a 2060 um, that may be one of the best graphics cards for around that 300 dollar range and now as we get a little bit higher into the range let's say if you're talking about a 5700 xt versus a 2070 super now i would still go with the 2070 super if you can kind of stretch that budget out a little bit um, for a few reasons first the 2070 super for the most part performance wise will beat the 5700 xt and now considering what we talked about previously about the driver issues the 2070 super is going to be a lot more reliable while the 5700 xt and i have one myself i do like it it may give you more driver issues and that price gap may diminish a lot if the card isn't as reliable now it is going to be priced better than the 2070 super of course but it's a little bit unpredictable at least in this month of march as we see these new fixes we'll see if they really fix everything we'll know by april like i said before but in the meantime i would say if you can stretch your budget out to a 2070 super that's definitely going to be one of the cards to go in this category or the 2060 super is also a 
a great GPU. You can find them now for maybe a little bit under $400. So it's going to be well under $100 cheaper than the 2070 Super. And while the 2060 Super price and the 5700 XT are kind of clashing a little bit in terms of price, I do think for the reliability of the 2060 Super, you may want to look that way until the 5700 XT is really ironed out with these driver issues. Then if you can get a 5700 XT for sub $400, maybe even like mid $300, it's a fantastic price to performance proposition. It performs really well, but there are those little caveats that the drivers are just not as good as Nvidia. And then of course, anything above a 2070 Super, like a 2080 and a 2080 Ti, there really is no competition at this level. So if you're playing at 4K or ultra wide or even 1440p high refresh rate, I think there's really nothing that's going to beat a 2080 Super. The 2080 Super at $699, if you can find it for around that, or the mid-700s, is definitely one of the best performing GPUs you can get. You could really consider it high-end, even though we have the 2080 Ti at a few hundred dollars more. That card has even less competition. There's literally nothing else that's like a 2080 Ti at that price point. So if your budget stretches that much, of course, get a 2080 Ti. It's still going to be relevant for years to come, even with with the 3000 series coming out it's still going to be a great gpu just like the 1080 ti even though it's a few years old now it hasn't been completely invalidated by the 20 series of course it doesn't have ray tracing but in general its performance has stayed on par with like a 2080 of this generation um, so that's a fantastic gpu um, we're not talking about those older gpus now but if you happen to see a good 1080 ti and you don't care about ray tracing it's still a great buy for the price so at that higher end definitely the the 2080 Super, or if you find a used 2080, really there's going to be no competition for the cards at this end of the scale. And if you're playing 4K or high refresh rate, these cards are going to be absolutely amazing. And of course, going up to the Titan RTX, there's really no competition there at all for that either. So your choice there really is just based on your budget, pretty much like the 2080 Ti. Now the 2080 Super definitely has superior performance over the 2070 Super. And while it does have a bit of a price premium, um, I think it's worth it if you can stretch your budget to that just because it's a fantastic GPU. Definitely most of the competition for GPUs and where you're going to have more questions are going to come down to that two to three hundred dollar range and that three to four hundred dollar range where you have AMD competing with various GPUs. But really anything over that six hundred dollar range going into the 2080 Super, um, the only decision you have to make there is if you want to spend that for your budget or maybe downgrade to like a 2070 super and at that point you have to see which gpu do you actually want let's say if you decide on a 2080 super do you get a founder's edition or do you get like an EV evga or an aces card then that's really where your decision is based at in general as we spoke about before in different videos third party cooler cards are definitely going to be better than the founder's edition cards just because their cooling is generally better but i really still like founder's edition nvidia gpus just because they have some of the best build quality you're going to get and the cooling is better now compared to the blower style cards of last generation's 10 series like the 20 like the 1080 ti used to have so even though the 20 series founder edition cards don't have the best cooling on the market they definitely have some of the best reference pcbs if you're going to water cool and definitely some of the best build quality now you can step up to something like an evga or asus card if you want like a three fan design or something like that it's going to be quieter and be a little bit cooler so that's basically the only decisions you have to make around these type of tier GPUs while most of your decision making on the actual GPU is going to come down to those lower price brackets like we mentioned. Now if you're looking for a budget budget GPU that's where it gets really competitive and even more confusing. I mean, you have this 1650, 1650 Super, then you have a 1660, 1660 Ti. And in this category, it's gonna be that same confusion with the 5500 XT from AMD. It's one of those cards where until we know for sure that the driver issues are 100% ironed out, it's really kind of hard to recommend it 100%, even though they definitely represent some great price to performance ratios around this price point. You just have to see if your drivers are going to be stable for whatever game you're playing in. As you get to that sub $300 level, of course, the top of that is that 2060 KO edition from EVGA, which is a 2060. And then before that, you have like a 1660 Ti or even a 1660 Super, which I think probably represents some of the better values around that price point. Then you just have to see whatever GPU you want to go with, you know, maybe Asus or EVGA. 
Um, most of those GPUs are going to be fine. So if you can find it for a good price, I'd say between $200 to $300, maybe that 1660 Super is going to be one of your best bets. I've seen a few 1660 Ti's on sale where they've been closer to that $250 price point, um, and that's going to be pretty good. That's going to get you a pretty good GPU as well. Just remember these are going to be GTX cards and not RTX, basically meaning they don't have ray tracing, because um, even if they did, the performance you need for ray tracing is more apt for something like a 28. 80 Super or 2080 Ti, or else you would just generally get too much of a performance penalty. But anyway, that's pretty much the breakdown. As you can see, at the higher end, your decision is pretty simple. You're pretty much stuck with getting a 2080 Ti or 2080 Super. Not that that's a bad thing. You're not stuck getting that. There's just no competition there. That's why we're waiting for AMD's Big Navi. As you step down to the 2070 Super, that's when you start to look at the 5700 XT and see if the cheaper price is worth possible driver issues. And then the same thing applies with the 2060 Super and 2060 as you start talking about the 5700. Basically, you have to ask yourself the question, is the cheaper price or the little bit better performance of some of these AMD cards going to be worth a headache with drivers? Um, do a little research on whatever game you're playing and you have to come to that decision. The lower cost and more budget GPUs have a lot more competition and a lot more things to choose from, making it a little bit more confusing. But I do like the 1660 Super, as I mentioned. So to sum it up, in that two to $300 range, I would get maybe a 1660 Super, or if I can stretch my budget a bit to that 2060 KO edition which is almost $300 then in the little bit more mid-range I would get something like a 2060 Super as we go up into the 2070 Super now I do like the 5700 XT if the drivers definitely are fixed I would definitely say that's a great choice in that range you can get them anywhere from like 350 to 400 low 400 dollars um, it's a great GPU if the drivers are working well and then of course anything above that like a 2080 2080 Ti is more based on your budget because there's really no competition at that level so basically most of your decisions are going to be made in that sort of lower end then you have a lot of choices and a lot of things to think about all right guys thank you very much for watching leave a comment below what type of gpu are you using and what are you looking to get in the future and i'll see you guys on the next video